two, one. Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadre on the Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. And today we have an amazing guest, Camille. I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Yes. Hi, my name is Camille Joy. I'm just excited to be on your podcast. So thank you so much for the invitation. Um, I'm the host of the Moments of Joy podcast. And um, I'd like to say I'm an encourager to the special needs parent. Love it. So today's topic, comadres, is supporting special needs parents' mental health um, needs. Um, and the reason why the topic came up, Camille, in her platform, is a staunch advocate about taking care of our mental health first before, you know, we pour into other people. And I feel like it's something that's not often talked about. Um, there's actually statistics regarding parents with, um, of, of kids with special needs having a hard time um, mental health wise. And, um, you know, I feel like this season for the podcast, we're going to be highlighting that more and we're going to be, um, trying to provide more, um, support for you guys as a, as a community. So, um, before we get into the, oh, yeah, go ahead. I said, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we get into the nitty gritty, um, what is your career? I am, uh, first of all, I used to be an executive chef, right? That's what I've been trained to do. And three years ago, um, after my son's diagnosis and all the hits that we received, you know, the blows, I'll call it, no sleep, um, just different things that Mason needed. Um, I chose to leave my career uh, with the support of my husband. So I'm a podcaster full time. I'm a speaker. Um Stepping into being an author, which is stretching me, is very hard. But, <laughs> um, and I'm a content creator online. So that's what I am. Full, full blown career right now. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so tell me about your experience when, you know, when you first got the diagnosis from Mason. I know that everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want you to like talk a little bit more about it and like, you know, if we can help other moms and kind of let them know that they're not alone. I let, 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 that was like one of my biggest, um, one of the biggest goals in the show is, is letting other moms know that they're not alone and that we're right. here for them. Yeah. Um, well, when Mason received his diagnosis, it was coming behind um, us knowing that he would be diagnosed with congenital heart disease. And so he had already had three heart surgeries. And so when the daycare provider um, first told me that she noticed delays, I was very much in denial. I was very guarded because I thought, like, not another thing, you know? No, just leave him alone. He's already been through enough. And so I asked her to just give me three months, and we would watch his development over those three months. And um, after the three months passed, she came back to me and suggested that he receive birth to three services. That's what it's called in Connecticut early intervention program. And so we agreed. And so he started receiving services. And soon after they suggested that he get um, evaluated for autism and he was. And so uh, just before two years old, he was diagnosed and it was difficult and easy at the same time. It was difficult because I was trying to, I wasn't, I was like, oh, this will go away with prayer. And I, I'm just being serious. That's how naive I was. Um, and I didn't know what else to do because that's what I normally do <laughs> in my faith because I'm a Christian. And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, I'll pray that away. Right. And then the second part of what I felt was, all right, I've seen f other family members be in denial. I don't want to be in denial. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to fully embrace that. Somewhere along the line, I I put down that uh, I'm a pray it away because one day when I was praying, so I have the kind of relationship with God um, where I hear from him too. We It's a dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> So I talk, I listen too. Mm -hmm. And so one day during prayer, praying for Mason and autism, the Lord asked me, would you be trying to pray this away if it was Down syndrome? And I sat up on the bed and I was like, what? Wow. No, I wouldn't be. 
You're <sighs> praying wrong. You're praying wrong, Camille. Mm-hmm. You're praying wrong. Nope. This is who he is. It's not a disease. It's not something to be embarrassed about. It's not something that needs to go away. Now you start commanding what his future is going to be. And that was a life changer for me. Wow. Oh, I got all choked up because <laughs> it, it's like, you know, we all have different journeys to arrive to the places that we are now. And um, uh, one of the things that, you know, oh, I forgot to say how we how we connected. So um, yes. through the podcast, we um, connect, connected with each other um, because um, La Cuesta had her on my show before. Mm-hmm. And then she she followed you. And I think she reposted one of your videos. Um, and it really touched my heart because it was just, you know, you were being so vulnerable and so open. It was one of those videos that you were like um, crying and um, just sitting on the floor, kind of, you know, going through the, mo- not the motions, but just like going through your emotions and like, val- like valuing that and, you know, and just being really real. Because the thing is like a lot of the time uh, as moms, especially women of color, um, it's not looked well by other people when we when we're when we show ourselves as being vulnerable or um you know having other feelings than being the strong you know black or brown woman you know so um yeah. that that it really really touched me and and it was just kind of like so eye opening like you know you were using your platform to let other mothers know that it's okay to have your moment, you know what I'm saying? So that that was like one of the one of the biggest things for me. Um so Mason's your only child? Do you have more children? No, Mason is not my only child. He is my last <laughs> child. I have five children. I have five boys, 20, 18, 17, and 15, who absolutely despise social media. So every now and then you'll see them in my stories or you'll see them. <laughs> on my page i paid my son ten dollars to get in the reel the other day and it was <laughs> and it was so messed up you could like see his body language that he didn't want to be in it i was like i can't even post this <laughs> <laughs> so i just let them be you know they didn't sign no. up for this <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but, Mason, um... by default he's just he's just gonna have to come along to, for the ride <laughs> <laughs> Until he tells me no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I just, I love, I love your platform and, and the fact that you share so much with like the other moms. I love when you do the lives and and we're all there, like in community and holding space for each other, which is really um, it's so it's so important and and it just you know it. I feel like by doing that, you're helping so many other moms, you know, mm-hmm. and and. It's, it, I feel like the, the work that we're doing is like, you know, sometimes it's hard. We don't always have it mm-hmm. together, but I feel like mm-hmm. by doing this, we're like dispelling myths and also like um, breaking down stigmas and stereotypes about our kids, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like what I want the most is to have, a, a, you know, more inclusive environments for our children, you know, spaces right. where they can feel safe being themselves and they won't feel judged you know mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and it is mm-hmm. difficult it is difficult and that's the reason why I started talking about it I didn't like think okay I'm just gonna start sharing my son's um journey it was because I needed other parents I needed to meet people we had moved from Connecticut to Texas and I had no family here or no friends mm-hmm. so I found, I happened to stumble across this new app called Clubhouse. And there for one year, I did a support group for parents raising children with special needs Mm -hmm. every Monday. And I met so many parents and I learned so many stories. At the time, my social media page was not geared towards um, special needs. It was just mothers in general. But I started to pay attention to the fact that the autism content did well and people wanted to learn more even people who didn't have special needs children it was intriguing they wanted to know how to support they wanted to know what life was like um Mm -hmm. and so that day that you were talking about when I was crying it was because two weeks before I made a decision that my page would be for special needs parents and so while I was sitting there crying I said 
I have to give them a message because this is a real feeling. Like Mason's mm -hmm. been crying for days, pulling his ears. I went to the doctors and we were both trying to hold him down while she checked his ears and he like turned into the incredible hawk. He's really strong. We were on the floor and then the doctor stopped and she said, Mom, we're not gonna traumatize him. And she couldn't check his ears. A couple of days later, I brought him to his pediatrician and she told me, you know, after looking, there's nothing wrong with his ears. It was sensory. Mm, okay. He doesn't have an infection or anything. And so it was really, you know, um, a, a transition that it was real. And then, like, uh, th there's times, like, I feel like a lot, a lot, like, we go through so much and, and we don't often check in on ourselves. Like, you know, like, sometimes I feel there's moments that I feel like very defeated and, and I don't, I don't want other moms to feel that way. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, being, being transparent and sharing our journeys with people can help other people not, you know, not feel alone. Cause that, that like, that was the biggest thing for me. I don't know if you felt the same way Camille, but oh, yeah. when he first got diagnosed, I felt very isolated. It was a very isolating diagnosis because even though I do have, you know, um, you know, baby cousins and, and, and other children in my family, nobody really was going through the, at that time, nobody was going through, um, mm -hmm. the diagnosis of autism or, or they didn't, we didn't really in my family, like we didn't even really know what, what autism was like that. Like I had to research it. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. I had heard of it, but I had never really interacted with anybody that was on the spectrum that I knew of at the time, mm -hmm. you know? So, so then you have to fight through ignorance, right? Yeah. Especially in, um, cause I'm Dominican. So like, especially in, in my community and, and mm -hmm. you know, educating myself, educating other people, like teaching right. my family as well as, you know, as teaching myself, that was like one of the, the hardest things for me. Cause you know, it, you know, you're learning and then you're also trying to dispel myths at the same time. Like a lot of the time, um, even like the way that they express a lot of the time, the way we're socializing in the Dominican community and, um, you know, Latino community is that, um, that kid is, um, quote unquote crazy, or yeah. they'll use like, um, words that are not very uplifting of our children, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like a lot of the time it, it was like, you know, fighting the ignorance and then also educating myself at the same time. Oh, I yeah. feel like once I got the diagnosis, um, what I did, I took time off of work. So I took three months off. Um, I was working at the bank at the time. And that that's actually when I decided to switch careers. So I went from being in the banking industry to working, like going back to school to become a teacher. So I decided to do special education, bilingual special education at the time. So yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> and then I decided to do special education because I wanted to educate myself more as well. You know, like there's certain things that you learn as a teacher that you don't necessarily learn and, you know, through the early intervention and all of that. So, yeah. um, so tell me more about your show and, and like what, what, what the work that you're doing regarding mental health and self-care and motherhood. I know oh, you're yeah. doing so much. I just love, I love everything. <laughs> yeah. I know I recently you went away, right? Yeah. I I started doing that a couple of months ago, every Monday, just talking about Mental Health Monday, uh, because I recently, I think a about April or March, I started doing therapy every Monday. Mm -hmm. um, but it was because one day I, I just noticed I was having a whole lot of anxiety all the time. Mm -hmm. And not just like, you know, the nervousness or anxiousness sometimes that we all feel, but it was really like a lot. And um, physically I would feel my chest hurting or my head hurting. And and normally it was coming after Mason had like an hour meltdown mm -hmm. and now he's fine. And I'm like, I'm having a meltdown. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I found myself crying more frequently I found myself unhappy with my uh, marriage, even though he's great and just snappy with the other kids. And I was like, okay, why is this mm -hmm. happening? Mm 
And it was because I was not taking care of me. I was just going and going and going to where I think I probably almost was about to have a nervous breakdown until I finally scheduled counseling. I I looked on psychologytoday.com to find the therapist that was good for me. You know, I dug into their background and saw which insurance, um, which psychologist took my insurance and well, therapist, not psychologist. The difference I learned too through therapy. Psychologists can prescribe you medicine, therapists can't. <laughs> so, um, but she taught me a lot about chemically what was going on mm-hmm. um, and why when you go through so much, sometimes your body will go in just in life in general. When we go through normal stressors, our body goes into flight or fight, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes when we go into flight, fight or flight so much, that hormone that naturally produces that, it starts to decrease. And then this is why we have anxiety or, you know, we have stress. And then I started doing studies. And so there are studies here in the United States that I read, different colleges that did studies and overseas in the UK and They all say that parents raising children with disabilities experience anxiety and depressive symptoms above the parent that's raising a typical child. And we know why, right? I always say our children have autism, but there are children that are confined to the bed. There are children with no arms and no legs. There are children who will never leave a hospital. And those Mm -hmm. parents have to still stand up strong, right? Mm Mm-hmm it's a mental load that we have to carry. And and the way that we get through it is we have to take care of ourselves. And most of us don't. And we just, we feel guilty for it. And that doesn't mean spending money. So prioritizing your mental health is something different than self-care, right? Mm -hmm. So I incorporated because I'm an entrepreneur now, I can uh, work whatever days. Mm -hmm. So I decided on Monday, I don't do anything. My, my sons ask me all the time, mom, can you bring me to the basketball court? And I have to remind them, it's Monday. <laughs> it's <laughs> mental health Monday. No, I'm not doing anything. If I stay in my, I can't stay in the pajamas because I have to pick Mason up from school. But if I had my choice, I would just stay in my pajamas <laughs> all day long and sit. So I have therapy on Mondays and I do something that makes, you know, my soul feel good. Just, you know, pours back into me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so it's important. so important. It's so important. Like one one last thing, my friend mm-hmm. um, recently she just posted a reel, maybe yes yesterday, and she passed out in her front lawn. Um, she was watering her flowers, and her son was in the house, and she passed out. And she said, it's, "She's a special needs mom. She has an autism son. He's four. And she said she's been not feeling her best, but she kept going and going and going and going. So the, her outside cameras caught her um, falling, and her neighbor ran over to get her and call 911. But she, oh she could God. not be here, and that, that represents all of us because we just keep going. There's so many moms that I interview, and, and, and like, you know, when I ask that question about what do you do for self-care, a lot of them don't have an answer for me. Mm-hmm. And then the thing is, like, you know, I feel because I went through a, 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 a episode like that. Like, um, I want to say I'm 39 now. Um, I want to say when I was like 35, um, you know, I've, I've dealt like I've, I've my whole life, like, has been kind of like you know fighting depression in one way or another right but then i was always able to like snap myself back but then i i started finding myself like in one of those like dark holes and i couldn't get myself out and that's when i decided to start going to therapy because like i feel like the things that i talk about with my therapist i cannot I feel like if I spoke to somebody else about it, like yeah. like a family member or something, that I would be judged for the yeah. feelings that I was feeling, you know. You would. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the and the thing is, like, people try to understand, but like, I feel like autism mom to autism mom, like, we know what we go through, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, not everybody can understand, you know, the mental yeah. load, and 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 it's serious. Like, people, 
especially like your friend that's scary that's so scary mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. the thing is like what motivates me to pour into myself is that if i'm not here who's going to take care of him you know yeah yeah and that's not fair to him so me by me taking care of myself and and prioritizing my mental health i'm able to be a the best mom for my child and give him exactly what it is that he needs you know mhm absolutely and your son is older right he's 13 yeah yeah so you you have the wisdom even for dealing with the puberty stages and all of that I'm, <laughs> I'm, right i've just been hearing so much <laughs> It's 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 a lot, and then the and and they don't even know. Like you know, a typically developing child has a hard time with puberty. Right. You know, once once you throw the autism into the mix, it's they they're like he has days that he wakes up kind of like like I'm bored and like yeah. upset, and then he doesn't know how to verbalize like to tell me exactly what's going on or what he's going through in his head. So you know that also affects you as well you know like i feel like a lot of the time um it, it it's just it, it's just it's just like a, like everything adds to our plate and then like we have to be very cognizant and very vigilant of like those things that deplete us and help you know take mindful moments to pour into ourselves yeah absolutely um because it, it's, it could be so many different ways that autism will show up, right? Like uh, Mason didn't sleep, but everybody's kid that has autism might not go through that. Mm-hmm. But he, it could be like four days in a row where he's up all night. And Girl, I'm tired. I, and that, that, that part. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, you understand, mm-hmm. but like people don't understand, like lack of sleep can definitely take a toll mental health yeah. wise like it's so hard i cannot mm-hmm. function at work if i haven't slept there was mm-hmm. days that aiden wouldn't sleep like like let's say 16 hours straight mm-hmm. you know and i can't be at my best at, at work you know i would have mm-hmm. to call out of work because I, I wouldn't be able to function Absolutely. you know like you know like complete yeah. zombie mode and like i i wouldn't yeah. be able to teach and like be a responsible teacher to my students yeah. if i if i'm not showing up for myself that's right and that was no the and then, my, my mm-hmm. husband looked at me after days of being up and days of like crying he's like i've never seen you cry like this he's like you know you you don't have to go back to work and i that was the one thing he said i didn't make him <laughs> tell me twice i quit and you want to know the funny thing which is really somebody will hear this story and say oh my god i would never do that i quit on the spot i did not give my two weeks notice i walked Girl. in on a sunday it wasn't even a monday Tuesday, during the week <laughs> i walked in and i was like effective immediately i'm quitting i leave i'm going i'm leaving my hands were shaking as i was talking to the lady and i knew i like this is not me i have to get myself together and i completely understand and you talked about your um you know what just what you went through with depression even before your son and that was some of the root for my um anxiety once i started therapy it wasn't all just having a child with a diagnosis it was the trauma that i have gone through all in life Mm -hmm. so when my children uh three of my children i was in an abusive relationship from 17 to 21 and um by the time i was like 26 we had entered into a custody battle and he won and so for nine years i didn't have my kids in my home and so my doctor, my therapist diagnosed me with post-traumatic stress disorder. And the root was not Mason. The root was mm-hmm. being separated from my children. So all of that was boiling up now. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. And then the thing is, like, I feel like moms of kids with special needs, we end up with, like, these, like, because we're so, we're so giving and we're so um, open that I feel like, a lot of the time we're prey to men that are abusive. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was in, I was in a relationship with a narcissist and um, mm. it, it ended up turning abusive at one point. And um, it only happened once, like, you know, but 
for me, it was just kind of, it was more the mental abuse. So then going through all of that, you know, and then having my son recently diagnosed at the time. So it was just like all of that was boiling, boiling and coming like, you know, coming up for me. So like, you know, it took me a while to, to, to be able to deal with the, with the PTSD of being in a relationship like that. Yeah. And then like, and then, and then the, the minute he left that he left the house, Mm-hmm. I felt this overwhelming sense of peace that I had never felt, you know, in a very, very long time. And even though I was alone, yeah, I did, you know, go through that 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 feeling of, you know, you're like, oh my God, I'm never gonna find somebody. Mm-hmm. But it was just like that overwhelming sense of peace. Like I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my god! I'm like sister. <laughs> yeah, right. That's how it is when you when you meet people and you find community. That's why I use that word so often. It's like, wow, I found my people. Even yeah. moms who have like children with cerebral palsy and children with dwarfism, children with all different, you know, medical diagnoses. I feel like we're all just, you know, we all are a community. We all, you know, we have to show up and raise our children to the best of our ability and then not talk about them like it is a burden, you know, it's beautiful at the same um, time. And, you know, I, um, I often think back to when I was 17, I was a um, senior in high school, a junior. Matter of fact, I was 16. So I was a part of this program called Best Buddies. Mm hmm. And um, it's a nationwide nonprofit that is in some high schools. And it's a program where you become best buddies with the children in special education. And so I would sit at the lunch table with them. And I even went to their prom and not my prom. So, like, I think about it and I know that even back then, like, God was preparing me for right now to have a heart for special needs children. Yeah. And, and it's, I feel like the work that we do is, is so important and, and, you know, the support and the fact that we're creating community, like mm-hmm. you don't have to go through it alone. I told these, I, I told this to the moms all the time. You don't have to do, do it alone. We were not put on this earth. God didn't put us on this earth to just be like, you know, individualistic, kind of like do your own thing. You got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Our, our our ancestors, we had community like right. that, you know, the the European mentality was not a, a community based thing. But our mm-hmm. African ancestors, we, we it, it took right. a village. It literally took a village. So this is this is yeah. what I want to reinstate and help support each other in that way, you know. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right, because when the slave ships came over, it was those African women who were the midwives right off the ship. They already knew mm-hmm. how to help these women have babies and, and everything from, you know, just being a community, being a village. Mm-hmm. Um. So, Camille, you told me you have your mental health Mondays, which I love. <laughs> I'm about to start yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to start doing the same thing. Yeah, but you um, can pick your own day, whatever day yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um. Like, what else do you do to pour into yourself? What are some of those things that that light your soul on fire that just like help you come back to being Camille? Um. <laughs> So what do you, what are the things that you do to help pour into yourself that set your soul on fire, that feed into more of Camille? Um, I do, I do self-development things. So I have a mentor. I, um, I travel a lot and by a lot, I, I decided the second quarter of the year, I wouldn't travel so much, but, um, once a quarter, I usually travel. Um, also, um, just normal things like doing a manic, getting a manicure and a pedicure, um, talking on the phone as simple as that is. I like to talk to my sisters and my mom and my best friend. Um, 
I could talk to my sister for like eight hours straight and we would not <laughs> talk about. <laughs> I <laughs> have friends I like that too. Time, <laughs> from like, I had to drive from Dallas to Houston at four hours and I talked to her the whole way. And when I got there, she was like, oh, you're there already? And we were just talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's so, that's so important. Like, yeah, but family is important to me. So, um, anything that that includes family. Yeah, I feel like um, my family. I honestly couldn't ask for a better family. Like my brothers are so supportive, and and my mom too. Like you know, I feel like whenever I'm feeling a little bit depleted, I can always come to them. You know, and they and they'll give me that. You know that support that I need. Even though sometimes, you know, <laughs> my mom could be a bit much. <laughs> yeah, all of our moms, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, it's 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 important, you know. Um what else what other things do you do? You like you get your nails done. You always look yeah. great, by the oh, way. Thank you. <laughs> I um I do get my nails done sometimes more pedicures than than you know my fingernails. Um and just I'm a homebody, so I like to things like Netflix and Hulu and being wrapped up in my uh, fuzzy blanket and sitting in <laughs> the house. I really like sitting in the house. My husband, he's always like, you need to get out this house and meet people. But I'm like, I meet people online. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and then, uh, so, so, um what so besides that like I, I yeah you really enjoy your your time at home do you like do bubble baths and stuff like that yeah i'm very spiritual too so i do like to pray i do like to go to church um i do when i'm home uh get face masks from like target or walmart the dollar ones and they might not be that great but i like to put them on my face sometimes and just you know, it makes you feel good. <laughs> um, another thing is I like to eat. I love that's, one, that's one of my favorite things. I like cooking, like for myself. Like people are like, you cook for yourself. I'm like, yeah, like I love cooking for myself, like trying new recipes and stuff like that. And then like trying different restaurants as well. Yeah, me too. I'm a foodie. So. But you, you're already, you're already classically trained, so I'm yeah. sure you're a Right. <laughs> you know? And when I came from tech, Connecticut to Texas, I, I, I mean, shamely, I'll say I gained like 40 pounds because I was just <laughs> eating and cooking. <laughs> so now I'm trying to work some of it off. <laughs> so does the rest of your family live with you in Texas or, or your sister and, and, and them? No, so my they're still in Connecticut, but I do have one sister that just moved to Texas. She's in Dallas, so we just visited her um, this week. Okay. Yeah, so she's close. I'm thankful for that. So you know, as well as I know, that it's hard to find people to watch your children um, that you trust and that will understand Girl. and follow your directions and things. So um, since we've had Mason, me and my husband haven't been able to go away together and mm -hmm. like alone since 2018 so i already told her this this summer please take your two weeks on the calendar and pick what time you want me <laughs> because he is coming he, my older children you know they'll be okay well i have to bring my 15 year old there too but so wait um and and your sister does she have any children yet or not yet yeah she has one a boy a 15 -year -old. okay that's cool that's good so um what what does like, we already talked about um self care? So how do you enforce boundaries? I know it's hard for us as as moms to like kind of really enforce boundaries and say no when when we you know it's in our nature to just like keep giving 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 all the time. So like how do you how do you um make it your business to enforce your boundaries? I think that um, when you prioritize yourself, it's one of the things that is just gonna come naturally. Um, and you have to identify whether you are a people pleaser or why you may feel uncomfortable saying no sometimes. Mm -hmm. But even you heard me say I even say no to my kids because I can't keep on putting everybody else before me. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, relocation really helped my no. <laughs> 
because <laughs> I'm so far away. So, <laughs> but um, I would probably have to exercise the boundary a lot more if if I was actually around so many of my friends and family. But mm-hmm. like, no, I can't run around for you. No, you know, I can't have you borrow any dollars. I need my dollars. <laughs> no, um, you know, I. And one thing I that happens a lot is we show up for others more than they even show up for us. Yep. And so all the time. This, this morning I thought about even a friend that I have, and I remember um, my grandmother always saying, "The phone works both ways." And she said, sometimes if you stop calling someone, you'll notice they don't call you. Mm-hmm. And so I, I apply that to relationships. <laughs> I'm like, well, if I'm always the one calling, then we need a, a readjustment here. Yeah. Like matching. What is it? Matching energy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um. So what else? I feel like I feel like we're pretty much done with the show. Um. Comadres, I want you guys to catch Camille's show. Um, I know you just did a, a recent rebranding, mm-hmm. right, of the show. So now, now, what, what are, what are you focusing more on this season? Special needs parents. So I have. I'm so excited. This week, I'm going to be interviewing um, some uh, two. Well, my friend Nikita, she's amazing. Nikita Nelson. Um, mm-hmm. Her daughter has autism and cerebral palsy. Um, I got in touch with Taylin from Netflix, um, Love on a Spectrum. So I'm going to interview her this week. You're going to interview Kaylin? Oh my yes. God. That is so yes. awesome. I love her. Yes. So I'm excited about that. And just, um, just special needs moms. I have, um, someone who has a daughter with dwarfism. Um, and so I'm trying to not just be autism. Uh, but give us all um, an opportunity to learn from each other. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I love it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, check out Camille at Moments of Joy podcast. Um, and you can always follow me at Comadreando Pod. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to send me a Comadregram via email at marcy at com, or slide up into my DMs. <laughs> um also, comadres, don't forget to visit our website, which is www.comadreandopod.com as well. And thank you for spending time with your comadres. Thank you so much, Camille, for being on the show. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Yes.